Hey guys, so I wanted to cover a recent game from T1 where I think with the way they're drafting right now, they're being a little bit ruthless on it, to be honest with you, in the sense that the picks and the way they're ordering it, it's like pretty much flawless in terms of all the fundamentals. It checks all the right boxes against um, a lot of their opponents. They just leave no openings. And I wanted to kind of demonstrate that because they ran yet another clinic on their recent opponents against Damwon Kia here, who are by no means a bad team. Like this team is hella stacked, right? See Shotmaker, Kingen, Kellen, Aiming, like these are no like low name teams, right? No name players rather. And these are very strong teams. And yet it's just that T1 have access to more tools that not many teams are able to do. The first one being this Ash, which is a really big crutch for them, which allows them to basically get free picks earlier your game and cross flex it between AD and support, by the way, giving them so many options and allowing them to basically secure good matchups into every bottom lane, pretty much every game. And it, if they're not getting it first pick, they're basically getting a ban out of it. So I think they're still one of the only teams that really use it. And this is a classic, another example of it here, where DK attempt to respond, they split up with the Varus, but it's not enough because they end up adding out 280 carry still, with the Kalista Ash. And even though there's a responses here, it's like when you see their first three picks, all they picked is that an all-encompassing winning bottom lane that has good matchups into everything and Cassante, which is basically an all-rounder blindable top laner at the, right? the de facto. And the point of this is that it's basically setting themselves up so that DK have to make a mistake or they have to take a risk, even though they're on red side. So they go for an R3 pike, which is like, you know, decent matchup, right? These double AD carry lanes are weak to full engage and Varus Pike has the output to do so in concept, right? But with any pick that you're going to reveal like that, there's always there's always going to be consequences. So on four, they respond top lane, which makes sense because, you know, it contributes to their comp anyway, and they want to, you know, decide what they want to go for. So they go for a weak side top that has decent counter pick into the Xante, not as pretty standard. And then this is where basically the draft ends because with Poppy on four, and a zero on five, which managed to slip through still, it's pretty much Jover, right? Even with the Akali on five, right? The B4 Poppy already pre-hedges against this, and T1 understand the connection between how their pick, their Poppy pick, can provide leverage for the laner. So this is why things like the Azir Poppy are commonly picked combos, because they cover for each other, and they're also a great front-to-back sort of defensive comp. So they're thinking about this and DK were probably just thinking, okay, if they pick something like Azir, I can play Akali. But when you think about what the consequences of every single pick and every and as they go into each thing, it changes your options, not only in the direct lane, but also in your overall comp. And that's what makes this comp really bad for DK. You know, they decide to go forward. They had decent matchups, quote unquote, right? With their pivot picks on three and five. But even though T1 are on blue side and they blinded, it doesn't really matter because their blinds were so strong and revealed nothing and they managed to pick things that could answer right this poppy is disgusting here and i don't even need to see the like the game to kind of know that right it's just so easy to pilot for t1 you know like most teams could pilot a comp like this this is a very standard comp so game two i wanted to kind of cover a similar sort of situation so the difference here is that t one's now in red dk wanted to go for blue and they ban ash so the difference here is that the karma kind of slips through and T1 are okay with this because these three bands, they're not willing to give up, right? And the Ash ban is banned as well. So at this point, T1 have to take the Varus because it's the only AD carry left that's standard in the pool, right? Uh, there's not, it's the, the actual AD carry pool is really small right now. So they go for that and it's or, it's arguably one of the best in slot for bottom lane. The Rell is the follow-up. I'd say pretty standard yet again. And then DK go for the Zyra Recon route, which is probably fine because there's no AD carries left, right? For our band, um, we have to step into the second tier. And yet again, T1 basically show no cards, right? It's this combo with Varus, you know, Oriana, or Azir, or these champions that don't have many direct counters. And then they pick a facilitator jungle, and that's the overall jungle pool right now, right? So right now, they basically also, also revealed nothing. And I would say DK are in a better spot here than they were in the last draft because, you know, I would argue that Zyrocon has more options somewhat and they have a really good laning. 
but still I find it's this before five sort of pivot that T1 manages to punish them on, even though it's only one pick. That's a crazy thing. This is also a facilitator, but what DK decides to opt for is a bit more of a forward take because they want to force themselves onto the Varus here. That's how they determine that they want to win the game. They could have went for a more defensive option. They could have went for another facilitator jungler. Um, they could have went Maokai, if they you know possibly, but they want to, maybe they want to hold their uh, damage split. They could have went other champions as well, but that is what they opted for. And as you can see here, with the Vi pick, it this this forces the T1 R5 to be Tom Kench instead. So if if it provides a bit of a bailout for the composition once more. And yet again, like DK, technically they played this draft a little bit better. But with the way this played out, I wouldn't say they would be too happy with this because their main win condition in playing forward and you know playing through the Zyrocon and forcing fights, it's it's gonna be shut down because this VRS Tom Kench is a traditionally good, you know, suppressing laning sort of bottom lane, and they can bail themselves out in team fights. So it's these picks that not only flex in terms of styles, but also in roles and just can do any comp. Like these are the power picks that T1 are constantly abusing in order to gain advantages. And I kind of just want to point that out. So hopefully that made sense to you guys. So see ya.